bless the name of the Most High. Oh, bless the name of the Most High. Even Tata and Zambi, Sinini na Nini, Ah, Yahweh, Yahuwah. Yes, we thank the Most High for you, you, and you. And we also thank God for those of you who have joined us from the beginning. We thank God for those of you that have been in the middle and those of you who are just struggling to try to get along. We thank God for you. Oh, bless your heart. And we thank God for those of you that have just entered into this journey. This journey is reading the forbidden books. You can get to these books, uh, the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, the book of uh, Jasher. You can get all these books, including the Apocrypha. All these are contained in the Ethiopian Coptic Bible, and all these books are sold on Amazon, Amazon.com. You will have to pay for these books because if you get them on, and, and should I say, if you get them in a, a format of a PDF format, you might not get a, a correct translation or a good translation of the book. Never no telling what you're going to get, but you're going to have to pay for the books. The books are very inexpensive. The Ethiopian Coptic Bible is, is the most comprehensive of them all. You'll have all the books contained in one book, and it's translated into English. Good for reading, correction, and training in righteous living. Yes, it is. Now, we're in the book of Enoch, the book of Enoch. Ah, I said that again wrong. We're not in the book of Enoch. It's been so God I love that book of Enoch. I really do. I love it. Yes, we're in the book of Jubilees, chapter 13. But first, let us go to the book of Jubilees, chapter 12 and verse 20. This is, I, I, want, I want those of you who can and who will to write this down. Put it in calligraphy on a board or make an artistic thing and put it somewhere where you can look at it every day even in your time where you spend with God and your prayer time and all these, and pray the prayer of Abraham because the time is at hand. There are spirits all over the world deceiving men and women to being something they're not, to being those things which God did not call them to be, using all kind of, some of them are going by their own spirits, some going by evil spirits, some going by so many deceitful means they don't understand. And yet half of it sounds true, but you're going to have to really pay attention to what these men and women are saying because it's a lie. Half truth is a lie. Let's get to the point. Abraham prays. Now, those of you who don't have this book and you're just listening, record it. So write it down. I'm going to say the whole thing and not even interrupt. He says, deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts. And let them not lead me astray from thee, O oh my God. And establish thou me and my seed forever, that we go not astray from henceforth and evermore. And that was read the prayer of Abram in the book of Jubilees, chapter 12, verse 20. Pray that every day. Write it down. Rememorize it. I'm doing the same. I'm in the process of making an artistic plaque upon my wall that I might see it every day and be reminded that evil spirits are in the land. And they're here to confuse you, to misline you, to give you the wrong things. To, but he says, what? What, what? what did Joshua say? What did Oshay say in the book that is called Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8? And this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth. If you don't have none of these books, you keep that book of the law. Not only the Ten Commandments, but everything after that. Because this is where your deliverance lie. This is where your deliverance is, is in the law of the Most High. The celebrated law of the Most High. The law that had delivered, the law that was caused Israel to, to progress, to advance. Or when they didn't do what God says, what happened? They decreased. And eventually, as we see today, many of Israel, most if not all, 
are defeated. And let us go to the book of Jubilees, chapter 13. And it reads, And Abraham journeyed from Haram to Sarai, and he took Sarai. Abraham, he journeyed from Haran, and he took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother, Haran's son, to the land of Canaan. Now, we know Canaan was the one who was cautioned by his brother, even his own father, not to go into the land that was not his. His land was further east, probably in the United States. I mean, the, Ham, the Hamites were up northern Africa, in the northern Africa area. That was their land, yes. It was the Hamite land. I mean, give or take, you got, you know, they were in the middle, and then you had Japheth in the north parts, and Shem in the southern parts from South America all the way to South, all the way from uh, the Sahel to South Africa, and then you had all of them all across there, even going down into the southern part of India. This is why the people in India are darker in the south than they are in the north. Come on here. He says, now, what happened? He took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother, Haran's son, to the land of Canaan. And he began, he came into Ashur and proceeded to Shechem, going through the land of Ham, and dwelt there a, near a lofty oak. And he saw, and behold, the land was very pleasant from the entering of Hamath to the lofty oak. I mean, a big oak tree is what he's saying. And the I am said to him, to thee and thy seed would I give this land. In other words, what you're looking at to you and your seed is what I'm going to give you. And he built an altar there. All, he, although the land of Shem is all over the place and it's to the south, this was Abraham's lot to his promised seed. Now, he said, I will give this land, verse 4, and he built an altar there, and he offered thereon a burnt sacrifice to the I am who had appeared to him. And he removed from thence unto the mountain Bethel on the west and Ai on the east and pitched his tent there. Now, there are those who say Ai, which is, is actually, you know, you, you look at the maps and you find out in South Africa there's an Ai, and then you find out there's a Bethel even in, I believe it's uh, Cape Town. They say Cape Town is short for Cape Anair. And you see, well, Jerusalem also, they say, is, is desolate. But then you go, there's another saying that says if you go into Kenya, around that area, from Kenya, Somalia, all, in it, all that southern area that's below the Sahel, that was where God had placed the children of Jacob. We don't know. They have valid very valid points. And then you got that little tiny place over there that they call, in what they call Palestine, you got that tiny place. All that place has been overrun by Arabs. From there all the way, the Hamites have been overrun by Arabs. Ma mainly, most of the, the Hamitic tribes have been over, except for the United States, the Hamitic tribes have been have been colonized, wiped out, renamed. Even down, even down in the South America, the Shemitic tribes, they've been wiped out, renamed, invaded by Genghis Khan and by, by the infiltration of the Mongolians coming through the Bering Straits. Oh, yes. I mean, you, you say things, yes, there were people carried over on the ships as slaves, but let's get a good, clear, and concise big picture of the whole thing. Now, I'm talking generally. I'm not getting in specifics, but I'm talking generally, and I know that what I say is true. Now, now he went and he saw, and behold, in verse 6, the land was very good. And everything grew thereon, and figs, and pomegranates, and oaks, and elixirs, and tiberants, and oil trees, and cedars, and cypresses, and date trees, and all trees of the field, and there was water on the mountains. Now you got to look at the fact is, 
what is Jerusalem? What, what they call Jerusalem and Israel is no, was nothing but just bare, barren land. It was barely to feed the people until, you know, they start bringing innovations there after it was colonized. All over the place, desert lands and everything. It was just desert. The people knew how to live there because that's where they were born. Now, you go back south of that, you're going to find out there was a lot of, I mean, you go down to Kenya, you go down down, down toward Nigeria and all those places, I mean, below the Sahel, uh, you got very few, and then you go over to South America. I mean, beautiful land. I mean, every herb-bearing tree, every herb-bearing bruch was there until the colonizers got there because they're like grasshoppers. The colonizers are like grasshoppers. They consume and try to move on. In other words, trying to be innovative, they're being destructive. But the fact is, is that even, even those that have been allowed in the land of South, Africa, South America were the Mongolians and the children of Shem they cohabitated together. But the thing was, idolatry was the biggest and the most vast thing. Even people are going to treat people right. That's okay. But looking at God, looking at your creator, that is the biggest mistake, the biggest sin, transgression of mankind. Because, as I said before, the devils want to dethrone God in your heart. In your heart. That's what it is. He used false preachers, everything, to dethrone God in your heart. Now, and it came to pass in the first year, in the seventh week, on the new moon. There you go, that new moon again. The new moon, that's the new month. Of the first month that he built an altar on this mountain and called the name on the name of the I am thou the eternal God art my God in the word Abraham said I own you you're mine just like a, a boy gonna look at his daddy you my daddy you gonna look at his mama you my mama yes he says you my mama you my daddy I'm gonna I, I you are mine I'm a, you're my family he said, and he offered on that offer a burnt sacrifice unto the I am, that he should be with him and not forsake him all the days of his life. In other words, he said, I'm going to do whatever please you, God. I'm going to do whatever please you. I'm going to obey. I'm going I'm to not put no other gods before you. I'm not going to make any images or anything of any type of God. I'm not going to do these things. I'm going to love you with all my heart, my mind, and my soul. Even he was in, later on as we read, he even loved him even to the point of about to sacrifice his only son. That doesn't have nothing to do with the New Testament, nothing at all. God doesn't deal in blood sacrifice. He just wanted to see how much Abram would go as far as the Most High is concerned. And verse 10, and he removed from thence and went towards the south, and he came to Hebron. And Hebron was built at that time, and he, he dwelt there two years. And when he went thence into the land of the south to Beeloth, and there was a famine in the land, and Abram went into Egypt. Now, God blessed Egypt for a reason. He said, even in the book of Exodus, for this cause of I raised Pharaoh up. Pharaoh was given power. Egypt was given power. Mr. Reen was given power. Whatever, how it ever came to pass, God works through circumstance. The circumstance was that Mizarim have gotten all kind of technological advances in everything. Not only from uh, right there in the southern part of Africa, but all the way into the United States, Mr. Reen had prospered. Or should I say the sons of Ham? They're all not where Egypt Egyptians. Now, and he moved from thence and moved toward the south. He moved toward the south. Now, he went into Egypt, 
in the third year of the week, and he dwelt in Egypt five years before his wife was torn away from him. His wife was torn away from him? Okay. Now, Tianus in Egypt was at the time built seven years after Hebron. And it came to pass when Pharaoh sees Sarai, the wife of Abram, the I am plagued Pharaoh. <laughs> in other words, this, this is not your, that fine woman ain't your. You might like them hips and the way she's 24, what, 36, 26, 36. Brick house, pretty in the face. No, that's not yours, brother. And Pharaoh and his house were great plagues because of Sarah, his wife. And Abraham was very glorious by reason of possessions and sheep and cattle and asses and horses. And He's a rich man. See, back then their riches was not gold and silver. Their riches was in their agriculture. Come on here. This is why they don't want you to have these farms and they don't want you to grow all these things because the riches are in agriculture. That's where it starts at. Agriculture. You can't make clothes without cotton. You can make them. You can't, have, you can't make clothes without plants. They didn't have petroleum back then to do the things that we do today. <sighs> and Abraham was very rich. And the men servants and maid servants and in silver and gold and exceedingly, Lot also his brother was wealthy. In other words, the, the majority of their wealth was what? Animals. Yes, they had gold and silver. I mean, most of them just wore that stuff and it just looked good on their bodies. I mean, ain't nothing like a woman that's looking, you know, got wear, wear her gold on her and it's just looking, you know, all neat and pretty and shiny. Yeah, There's nothing. And Pharaoh gave back Sarah. <laughs> You know, he said, you can take this woman back. I don't care how pretty she look. Uh-uh. She's messing me up. Gave back Sarah, the wife of Abram, and he sent him out of the land. Get out of here, man. Go. Yeah, she look good. She fine as wine and just my kind, but no. She cussing me. And sometimes you just have to let things go. I don't care how good they look or feel or whatever. You have to let it go because it's no good for you. Causing you to be cursed out of the land of Egypt. And he journeyed to the place where, they, where he had pitched his tent in the beginning, to the place of the altar. Now, this is history. This is not an allegory. This is this history with Ai on the east and Bethel on the west. In other words, Ai on the east and Bethel on the west of Ai. In other words, it sounds like either he was, ev see, they got it where it's situated. See, they could have situated if, the, if, if, if those who wanted to be Israel would have went into Africa to settle there, they would have situated some kind of way and manipulated the Bible in order to fit their agenda. <coughs> and on the East Bethel, excuse me, and he blessed the I am his God who had brought him back in peace. And it came to pass in the 41st Jubilees, that's 41 times 49, in the third year of the first week. In other words, the third year of that 49th Jubilee. And in the first week, he returned to this place and offered thereon a burnt sacrifice. Now, he was not a Levitical priest. That goes to show you even Balak offered and made a sacrifice unto the Most High. I mean, you, you, you can't, that is the office of a Levitical priest, but when there's none present, yes, God will allow you to sacrifice if you can. Yes. This Jesus or this Yahweh Shai, he wasn't a sacrifice. Many of us need to get, through our, get that through our sick, he was a martyr. Get it through your thick head. He was a martyr. He was, he was martyred. And offered on a bird offered thereon a bird sacrifice and called on the name of the I am and said, Thou the most high God of forever and ever. And with that, we're gonna say peace.